So before we get started like we, do, like we used to do, we have our affirmation, and those of you online can join us. This is to awaken our consciousness, strengthen our consciousness, that uh, the light will rule what it is we do. That's the whole idea, and we'll talk a little more uh, today. But the whole point is we want to, it's up to us. For those of you who have studied before, you understand that the Creator is not in control of this world. Oh, people here I already got it. You're shocked out there. The Creator is not in control. The Creator created perfection, and the rest is up to us. That's why they teach us we have free will. So it's with our free will that we want to let or channel the light of the Creator to be in charge down in this world. And so this is a way we're going to strengthen our consciousness to overcome all of the illusion and negativity that's out there, that we can make it good, which is actually what we're going to talk about today. So if you join me together, we're going to say our affirmation together. Consciousness is everything. I raise my consciousness today to see the miracles and wonders of life. I commit myself to behave with greater love, compassion, and kindness towards all human beings. The key is the word commit. Does it mean we're going to be perfect? People not sure here. We have a lot of Libras in the room. Right? No, it doesn't mean we're, not, we're going to be perfect, but we're committing ourselves to get better and better. And that's really the key. So this is what I want to talk about. And while I, before I uh, let it go on, one, I want to thank you all who are joining us online. Thank you for your support, for sharing the videos, starting to watch parties, which is a hint that you can start a watch party. And let's uh, exponentially grow those people who are watching this and getting this wisdom. And also, uh, like the page if you have not done that yet, because that helps us reach more people. And if you have questions, even you who are here, Facebook me your questions, things that might help me uh, design a topic for a spiritual Sunday that will help you and all the people who are watching from around the world. Because all of us who are here, we may have one uh, consciousness or one focus of things, but there are people around the world who are in all sorts of different situations. And we want to be able to help them in their particular situation. So if you have any question, please Facebook me and let me know. And we'll see how either we can answer the questions or we'll use it for a topic for Spiritual Sunday. Okay, so let's get started like this. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Are you ready? I'm ready? All right, good. Nice to see you. So have you ever had anything bad happen to you? Once. Once. Okay, we have one. Going twice. Anybody else more times? Three, four, eight. So if we've had bad things happen to us, usually what is the thought going through our head? Because remember, consciousness is everything. So the thought through our head is, how c why me? Why is this bad thing happening to me? I'm such a good person. I'm such a nice person. Look at what's going on in the world. How come it's not happening to those bad people and not these good people? Yeah, I'm just checking, yes. We all have those questions, don't we? Why me? So today I want to answer that question, at least according to the Kabbalist. And as we teach in the classes, especially for those of you who are new, whatever you'll hear here, whatever you'll hear on Kabbalah.com, whatever you'll hear from any book or teacher in the Kabbalah Center, we ask you, do not just believe. So you don't have to believe what I'm saying. But at the same time, I'm asking you, don't just disbelieve. Don't just dismiss it because it doesn't fit your paradigm of the day. Or it doesn't fit the way you think the world works. Let's be objective. As we usually talk about, um, like spiritual scientists. We'll go with this theory. We'll go with this idea. Then we'll understand more about it. And then we'll see how it fits what we've experienced personally and what we see in life around us. Because as the old saying goes, the proof is in the pudding. So, of course, right now we're just going to dismiss these things because, like that, it's unfair. How could a nice person like us have these bad things happen to us? Now, the answer I'm going to give you is according to the Kabbalists. But I also want to share with you, it's not going to be easy or comfortable. But at the same time, once we're willing to learn and apply it in our lives, it is the most powerful, transformative tool that we could get. Imagine, would you like to be able to turn all your chaos, all your negativity into light and blessings? Yes or yes? That didn't sound... They're louder than you out there and they're streaming. Yes or yes? Yes, yes exactly. But 
We have to be willing to put in the effort. That's the key. That's why it says, I commit myself. Because once we're committing ourselves, then the power of our soul, the power of the light of the Creator will join us to give us strength. So here we go. Let's start simple. We know the spiritual is the source of everything, but it also manifests in the physical world. Right? Simple. You have a sense of hunger. Nobody can see it, per se. But then you do the action of going to get something to eat. So first the spiritual, then the physical. So the physical is pattern on the spiritual. So science is a way, eventually, of proving what the Kabbalists have been teaching us for thousands of years. So what does science say? Everything is cause and effect. What goes around comes around. Action, reaction. Yes or yes? yes. Got a lot of this coming today. Yes? Yes or yes? yes? It is. Is there any exception? Ask a scientist. Back in the 70s, there was something called the chaos theory. Randomness. Of course, in the 80s, I think early 90s, they came to discover that even in what they thought was chaos and random, that there was a pattern to it. So according to science, everything that happens has a cause and effect. There is no randomness, there is no exception, there is no coincidence. So when we talk about something called an accident, you ever heard of an accident? So I'll show you how human beings don't believe that it's random. You ready? Are you ready? Yes. Two cars meet in the middle of an intersection. What some people define as an accident, yes? What's the first thing both sides want to figure out? Whose fault? Who's to blame? Well, if it's just an accident and it's just randomness of the universe, then there's no one to blame. Unless you want to blame God, okay, blame God. But you can't blame the other driver. So the fact that every human being wants to find fault in something, and it's not just an accident. How many of you ever had any bad stuff happen to you, we said? How many of us not only say why, but want to blame somebody else? Well, if the government didn't do that, or this person didn't do that, or my boss didn't do that, or the economy didn't go that way, right? We want to find blame. So then we do not believe in our heart and soul that there's anything random, anything coincidental. And science validates that. So then what's the reason? If that's true, there's no coincidence, there's no randomness to why there's human life on earth. So we've come to learn from Kabbalah 1 forward, the only reason, yes, the only reason that human beings are here on earth is for one simple thing. I didn't say easy. Simple. Act like God 24-7. Period. To share 24-7 to take the light that's implanted in our soul, shine it out 24-7 to everyone in every way all the time. Which then means, which is the hardest part of it, to think of the other person before I think of myself. That's tough. That's tough. What can I do for the good of the other person before I think of the good for me. The beauty of what we learn here is, as we do that, as we're acting for the good of the other person, we are receiving that same good at the same time, cause and effect. So if we're doing good for them, it's automatically for us. When we think we're doing good for ourselves alone, then that's all we get. And then it cannot continue. So that's why we're here to have all the blessings. The more we act like the light, the more blessed we are. So if we really want all our blessings, if we want to be completely blissed out, then we just act like God all the time. So what happens to the stuff that we've done before? If we've been angry, been jealous, we've been a people pleaser. Anyone here ever been a people pleaser? Ever acted like a people pleaser? So you know how they say whether it's a, a guy or a girl who are trying to date three or four people at the same time. So, yeah. okay. right? Think of what it's like. You got to remember what you said to this person, then you got to remember what you said to this person and this person, so you don't mix it up, you don't let the cat out of the bag, whatever it may be. Think how much work and effort that is. Now imagine trying to please three or four people. What do I do for this person to make them like me? What do I do for this person and this person? It's almost the same thing. You've got to carry so much in your head. If you just act like the light 
and you just let proactivity, the care of another person come out, you don't have to worry about what you said to this one, this one, and this one, because you're always heading in the right direction. Now what happens when we're heading in the wrong direction? When we're acting in an angry way, jealous way, people pleasing, sad, guilt, shame, whatever. So again, 21st century. So the car that I drive, it ha I forget what they call it, but if you're driving in your lane, everything's fine. As soon as the car starts to go a little bit over the line, what happens? You hear this beep, 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 and the steering wheel starts to pull you back into the lane, unless you put the turn signal. If that's true in the physical, how do we see it in the spiritual? It's the same thing. There are warning signs. There are those beeps. When we're acting in a jealous way, fearful way, greedy way, egotistical way, arrogant way, people-pleasing way, there's a beep. There's a warning to get us back in the lane. It's not a warning like some people think, oh, that's a punishment. God slaps you for doing the wrong thing. Uh-uh. Cause and effect, just like the car. Is the car saying anything bad about us? No. It's helping us to stay in the lane so everybody has harmony. Because if you're in your lane and there and there, no accidents. Caught the word? No bumping into each other. We'll change it that way. Right? Now, how does life do that? There's something called the tikkun process. Tikkun, for those of you who are new, means correction. It's not quite the same as karma, but it's a similar idea. It gives us the chance to correct things. So if we've acted not like the Creator, in a non-light way, then we have to have that little wake-up call, that beep, so we can start acting like the Creator again. Because sometimes we don't even realize it. How many of you have ever done anything unconsciously that then somebody looked at you and said, why did you say that? Why did you do that? No, not here. How about you? Right? You do things unconsciously that may hurt somebody's feeling or whatever it may be. So our tikkun process means I have to correct my negativity. I have to correct those non-God-like behaviors. That's what tikkun is, which means then it has to show up. It has to show up in my life. So now I want to share with you, there's two ways that this can happen. One is like this. And it's interesting the time of year we're in. You know Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol? So there's the story, right, that there's this really stingy, mean guy, Scrooge, and one night he's visited by these angels, right? And the angels are pointing out essentially what? Here, Scrooge, this is what you did in the past. This is how you acted in the past. Now, like most of us, can you remember what you said to every person in your day, today's Sunday, let's say even Friday, only two days ago? Can you remember everything you did? Everything you said? No, we can't. So, but everything we said and did set up a causation that has a return effect. So if we can't remember and the effect comes back, what are we probably going to say? Why me? What did I do? Because we forgot how we behaved, maybe with a little arrogance, a little judgment, a little anger, a little greed, a little people pleasing. Right? We forgot. But the universe, like that warning sign on my car, stay in the lane, Chaim. Get back to acting like the light. So Scrooge had the visitation, if you will, the awakening, to realize, look, this is what you did in the past. This is who you are now. Look at what's going on. And this is what could be your possible future. Dying lonely. Nobody coming to your funeral. Nobody caring about you. What a dull, useless life. So what happened to Scrooge? He woke up the next morning and he got into a new way of acting. But then there's the other story that we read in the Bible called the story of Job. Job. What's the story of Job? You read the book, it's like the greatest victimization story there could be. Here's poor Job just living his life and all of a sudden his family dies, everything taken from him, Everything goes to zero. Ultimate chaos. And what does Job ask? Why me? Why me? So if you only read the Bible story, 
Yeah, at the end of the story, his friends say, look, you should change it, you should believe in God, blah, 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 because he goes to blame God. So in the end of the story, he gets back everything he had, right, and in, in reconnecting with God. But the Kabbalists explain, why did it happen to Job? Because it's important for us. Not all of us have yet done the correction on the things, the mistakes we made. Because we're still in the why, right? They did it to me. And you know what the worst part could be? If the they are not in the physical world anymore. How do you go and even make up? Or how do you get them to apologize? Or how do you work anything out if they've already left the physical world? So Job, according to the Kabbalists, because as we said, even science says, cause and effect to the ultimate. So something most people don't know, Job, if you remember the story of Egypt, when the Israelites were in Egypt and they were enslaved, Job was one of the counselors of Pharaoh who said, yes, torment and torture them. Take away all their goods. Take away all their possessions. Take away everything. Well, what's the comeback from that? If he said, take away all their possessions, what has to happen to him? Take away all his possessions. If he said, yes, torture and torment them, ultimately to their death, what has to happen to him? Family and friends around him leaving the world. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Now, those two lessons we have to ask ourselves. Which are we? Which are we? And sometimes it's a little of both. Sometimes we're the Scrooge. Right? Let me, have you ever had the, the um, experience where you get this thought? I should call this person, I should make up for this person, I should do this thing, I should act in a sharing way. You ever had that thought in your head? Did you ever not listen to it? Exactly. Exactly. So why do we get that thought? Why does it come to us? So that we can be like Scrooge. Before the bad stuff happens, we can get in there, we can fix things. You're listening to a class, those of you who watch Kabbalah.com. You're listening to a class and all of a sudden, boom, you're inspired. Yes, I'm going to go out and I'm going to apologize to that person even though they did the terrible thing. Very powerful transformation. But along the way, then we get the thought, no, maybe not now. That's the nicest excuse. Okay, maybe not now, I'll do it next week. And then there's the worst. Why should I apologize to them? They did the bad thing, not me. And then we don't do it, and then the effect comes anyway. So we can be the Scrooge where we have those intuitive thoughts, we get inspired, we hear something, hopefully on Spiritual Sunday, in one of the classes, that wakes us up and says, okay, now I'm going to act like God more. I'll find a new way to share outside my comfort zone. Or, heaven forbid, we got the other side. Both of them lead us to the same thing. Right? Remember the car. As long as I'm in the lane, it doesn't beep, doesn't act up. The moment I start to move a little bit, then it starts to act up and guide me back. So it's like a wake-up call. So what's the wake-up call of Job? And it doesn't have to be for us, heaven forbid, losing everything. But let me ask you, do you know anybody who has money who has no blessing in their money? They're always worried about it. Where's it going? Who's it going to come? Who's trying to take it from me? How can I invest it? Oh, I lost it in that investment. Blah, 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 blah. So there's no blessing. They can have a lot of money. No blessing. People have family and friends around them. No blessing from them either. Because all they're holding is a little sadness, a little anger, a little fear, a little resentment. I remember what they did, especially now. It's the holidays. Going to come the holidays and family going to get together. Do you think every family is going to be happy and harmonious in all these gatherings? No. I've heard for 33 years in the center. You know, Chaim, I have to go to this family gathering, but so-and-so is going to be there, and I can't stand them because of X, Y, Z. Right? We all have those things. So we want to ask ourselves, which do you want to be? Do you want to have the wake-up call of Job, where there's difficulty in relationships, heaven forbid, or business, or health challenges, or things like that? Or do you want to be like Scrooge? Did we listen to our intuition? You listen to the dreams that come to you. You listen to the inspiration that you get through some of the classes. Yes, I'm going to commit myself, go out and behave like the light. So whatever it may be, instead of being arrogant, go out and be humble. I just read a few different things. The Kabbalists teach us, if you hear a lesson and then you see it written, it's a very powerful sign. So I saw just this weekend three different Kabbalistic writings that say our part of our work is to act humble. And humility also means to think that we're the lowest person on earth. Not in a bad way low, 
but I can learn from everyone. Because there's always, if we believe the Creator is infinite and always shining its light on us, then there's a hint what I can get so I can improve my life like the Scrooge. Right? I got the intuition. I can see it everywhere. But if I think I'm better than even some people, sure, all of us look, there's somebody higher than us, but there's a lot of people lower than us. So from those low people, we cannot receive. Think simple. If you have a pitcher of water and a glass, does the glass, if it wants to receive from the pitcher, have to be above the pitcher or below the pitcher? Hello? You can't figure that out? <laughs> below. So that's what they're teaching us. Not that we should feel we're nothing or have no ability or whatever. No. But feel we can learn from everyone. So in every situation, let's accept whatever inspiration and guidance we can get because... If we had the choice, better to be learning like Scrooge, by the intuition, by the in, um, inspiration, by the revelation, than like Job, to have a lot of difficulties and very traumatic difficulties to wake up. Because at the end of the story, they both woke up. So we'd rather go the way of mercy, it's called, than the way of judgment. So we choose. It's not up to anybody else. We decide. And that's why our affirmation is, one, consciousness is everything. But two, let's commit ourselves to behave with greater love, kindness, and compassion to everybody. Don't pick an exception. There's nobody out there that we cannot gain light by our interaction with them. But we have to. We have to be the ones who decide and then do the actions. And the nice part is that everybody else on earth, we may be all together physically on earth, but my destiny is based solely exclusively on my behavior, not on yours, not on my family's. My life based on my behavior, your life based on your behavior. And therefore, it's to our greatest advantage and benefit, act like the light more often, and greater blessings will come back to us. Part of the difficulty is we expect, because that's the way we grow up. What do your parents, or what do some parents teach their kids? Johnny, you've got to go share with Mary, and then Mary will share with you. So then we grow up thinking, if I do good to this person, they've got to do good to me. No, it doesn't work that way all the time. I'll do good as channeling of the light. The Creator will make sure the universe will calculate it, bring it back to me somehow. It may not come back from the person that I did good to, but we want to think I'm doing good for them and through them out into the universe. Then the universe will find a way to bring it back. So don't get caught up in, well, if I do good to them, they have to do good to me. And if I do for this one, they have to do... No. It is cause and effect. Absolutely. Because we don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means we're looking in the wrong area. Right? We're looking, I did good to this person. I'm expecting good from them. Meanwhile, it's coming all the way around this way and it's coming from behind me and it's happening to me and I'm getting the good. I just don't realize it. So then a person stays in that thought of lack. Right? It's unfair. How could it be? Why didn't it work that way? Etc. So, challenges are part of life. Have to be. As we just said. Why? Because we've made mistakes. If we've acted in a non-God-like way, then we have to have it come back to us. So if we acted with jealousy, like we said, who remembers what we said on Friday? But what about five years ago? If we acted with jealousy five years ago, what's the only way we can correct jealousy? Something has to come into my experience today to awaken in me a sense of jealousy. Now I can overcome the jealousy with gratitude for my good, happiness for their good. What comes back to me? Cause and effect. I put good out there, happiness and gratitude, it'll come around. And the universe will make sure it grows. I'll have more things to be happy about, more things to have uh, gratitude for. Because not only in a spiritual way does what goes around comes around, but when the good goes out there, it comes around even greater than I sent it out there. So you want more good? Do something good, it'll come back two, three, four, five hundred times more back to us. So there's nobody on earth who doesn't have challenges. Do you know anybody? Everybody has challenges, right? So challenges then, if you're looking at it, become our... Quality control. Think about it. 
Our job here is only one. Act like God 24-7. Shine our light 24-7. So then what's quality control? If it were a business, if you were making shirts, what's quality control? They inspect every shirt for what? What are they looking for? Faults, flaws, defects. So when a quality control person finds a defect in a shirt, is that good or bad? Good. It's good for the business because they don't send out a defective uh, shirt that then the reputation is, ah, oh, these are terrible clothing. So yes, even though initially it's a little uncomfortable, this has a defect that you have to fix it or just set it aside or sell it as a defect. You follow? So the quality control is good. Same in life. Our challenges are an opportunity for us to have quality control over our life. Make sure we're in the lane of sharing, the lane of kindness, humility, compassion, forgiveness. Why? Because we're just good people? Don't ever forget the purpose of acting in a more, more generous, compassionate, sharing way is that more will come back to us. The nice part is it also influences everybody else. So if you are all acting with greater love, kindness, and compassion, it's affecting all of us, all the students in the center, and ultimately the entire world. As they're acting with greater love, kindness, and compassion, it's also helping us and supporting us. So I heard one class from my teacher, Rav Berg, from many years ago. He says, if everybody has challenges, how come one guy flourishes and the other one doesn't when they have similar challenges? It's how they dealt with it. As we call it in Kabbalah, one did the restriction and one didn't. Or as we now talk about it, one did the pause. Why is it in my movie? Meaning what uh, reactive feeling is it awakening? Like we said, jealousy. Pause. It's awakening jealousy in me. Is jealousy a light behavior? No. Therefore, I can either continue to act jealous and keep the chaos going, heaven forbid, or we can pause and say, you know what? Let me have gratitude and happiness for this person's good because the Creator already gave me my good. I just have to claim it by my actions. So then we've transformed. That's the person who the challenge becomes perfecting, progress, elevating. But the person who doesn't restrict, doesn't pause and just say, oh, blame them and why me and how come and stays the same, then life stays the same. But heading down. Either we're heading up or we're heading down. That's it. Uh, fortunately for us, even the down escalator will eventually lead to the Garden of Eden, just with a lot more pain and suffering, like Job. Or we can be like the Scrooge. Wake up, get the truth from inside of us, and then act like the truth. That's up to us. Now, what about all the, the things before? What's happened to us before? You ever tried? Right, because I can hear it. Maybe it's all you out there. But I am. You don't know how many times I've tried to be good to those people. I've tried to be nice. Even I'm scanning the Zohar and sending them light, and they're still not behaving nicely to me. So, you want a little inspiration? And a challenge? But this is a good challenge. Thomas Edison. Anyone heard of Thomas Edison? Light bulbs. So, they had the electricity, they had the two poles. The only thing he couldn't find was what material would go between the two poles that would let the light shine like these do, just consistently. 10,000 tests. 10,000 tests he went through till he found tungsten. Have you gone through 10,000 tests? Okay, somebody's shaking their head here. Right? But what did he say? Was each test therefore a failure? Even one I heard, you know, like the lab blew up. He had to, you know, fortunately nobody was hurt, but they had to put everything back or replace things, et cetera, et cetera. No, he said very simply, every test that didn't work, one, he, he found out, he discovered what didn't work. And two, he knew he was that much closer to the answer. In other words, every material that didn't work he knew he was getting closer to the right answer, to the tungsten. In his case, it was 10,000 to give us inspiration. So just keep going. That's why it's, I commit myself. Because sometimes we're going to be nice to that person. They're going to kick us in the teeth, as the saying goes. So find a way to keep being nice. Now, I'm not telling you to be the doormat. 
You don't have to be the doormat and keep saying, here, here's my teeth, keep kicking me. No, but you've got to keep sending light. You've got to keep wishing them well, even while you move away from them, even while you'll never see them again. Because remember, what goes around comes around. So if a person stops sending light, even to that person, the bad person in their life, then it's less light for the person themselves. If we're emanating all our light all the time, then the universe is reflecting back light all the time. So we want to wake up, we want to realize, ah, I want to be like the Creator. Think about it metaphorically. Because like we said, it's not the Creator's universe per se. We're channeling the light of the Creator. Everything is based on the energy of the Creator. But it's how we use it, how we direct it, that determines either it's going to be the Job way or the Scrooge way. The way of mercy, where we're changing ourselves voluntarily, or the way of the challenges that come to try and push us back in the lane. But either way, we are using the light of the Creator. We are the ones using it. So then it's not up to the Creator, it's in our hands. It's up to us. So we're going to decide now, which way do we want to go? Which way do you want to go? You want all your blessings or not? Yes. Yeah. We want all our blessings, so let's just go for it. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need strength. We need strength, we need power, we need support, which is why we have what we do here in the center. One, just the learning. The fact we're learning this technology gives us an opportunity to act this way. If you don't know, how are you going to apply it? Can't. Can't. So the beauty of what we've established here in the last 50 years, since the Rav and Karen Berg took over the center from their teacher and their teacher's teacher, etc., was to create community. Let's create a place people can gather and we can support each other. We'll have the tools, we'll have the technology. I hope all of you, unless you're brand new, you have a Zohar, at least the little pocket Zohar, right? It just shines light. It's simple. You shine light, you awaken your soul. You awaken your soul, you have more power to do the pause and then act like the light. So we have everything, all the resources are available, but we have to take advantage of them. Scan from your Zohar. Learn in the classes. Go on Kabbalah.com. Whatever class you listen to, I guarantee you, if you're listening, doesn't matter which class it is, you're going to get some revelation, some awakening, some aha moment. That's what I have to do. That's the action I have to take. Because it's always going to look like somewhere along the line, it's going to look like, well, you know, if I'm a good person, why do these things happen? So we have to keep reminding ourselves, metaphorically, God loves us so much that God will allow us to be in those challenging situations that will, if we use them right, push us back in the path of the light. Most people, because the power of the opponent, that parasite we talk about that's in our head, think that if God is so good, everything should just be good. And the bad people should have bad, and the good people should only have good. But like we've discussed even shortly here, no, the challenges are quality control. Where have I made a mistake that I don't remember? so that I can fix it, because when I fix it, then the product that I am, the light that I shine, is more powerful, and what comes back? More light, because it is exact. It is exact. No exceptions, right? There's no, we put the light out there and it doesn't come back, no way, but we don't always see it. We have to see it, we have to perceive it, we have to listen. So as we close, I want to share with you this story. There was this angel who, let's call him a senior angel. So the senior angel is going around you know, the, the land and you know, meeting people and basically blessing them or what have you, doing things for them. And so he's got the, the, um, the new angel, right, the intern, who's following him. So the, the senior angel says to the little one, says, wait, whatever you see, don't ask anything. I don't want you to say anything because everything is not as it seems. Okay, it's following. So they go, now they take on a physical body and they go out to this one area and they come to this house that looks very affluent and they knock on the door and they look like beggars. They say, please, could you help us with a little food, a place to stay? You know, this is like in, in Europe, so it's cold in the winter, this and this. So here are these, these wealthy people and they said, here's a little bit of food and you can go sleep over in the barn like with the, the horses and the pigs. So they go in the barn and they see a hole in the wall. So the senior angel does his magic, and the hole gets repaired. And the little angel about to say, ah, what? 
things are not what they seem. Okay? So they go from there. Now they, they go to another town. And they go to this town and everybody's, you know, comes to them and the same thing. Could you help us? Could you help us? Could you help us? People don't want to help them. So the senior angel blesses them, each person. Bless you that you will be a leader of your town. Bless you that you'll be a leader of the town. So the little angel thinking, they were so bad to us, how could you bless them to be a leader? Ah! Things are not what they seem. So then they get to this little broken down house and they knock on the door and they still look like beggars. And here comes this very obviously impoverished couple. And, you know, could you please help us? You know, we're wandering, it's so cold, this and this. So this couple brings them in, lets them have their bed, right? You can imagine an old little shack like that. Their bed gives them food, everything like this. And in the middle of the night, their only sustenance is the cow that gives milk and they can sell milk. So the senior angel kills the cow. So as they're leaving, the little angels had enough. That's it. you got to tell me why you're doing these things. They make no sense whatsoever. He says, I told you, things are not what they seem. He says, so tell me why these people treated us so badly and you fixed the wall in their barn. He says, well, because they treated us badly, what has to come back to them is the same thing. So if I left that hole open, they would have come at some point the next day or two and they would have found the treasure that was hiding in that wall from the previous owners who left it there. So I covered it up so they couldn't get the treasure. Things are not what they seem. So he says, okay, so what about this town? We went to all these people and they, nobody was helpful. Nobody wanted to take us in. Nobody wanted to help us. And you bless them, they should all be leaders. He says, well, things are not what they seem, are they? What do you have if you have a whole group, a whole town of leaders and nobody following? Nobody to do the work. Then they will have the same chaos that they were inflicting on the poor people who came to them. So it wasn't a blessing to bless them to be leaders. It was actually putting them in that road of Job, right? The difficulty, because now, like we all know, you ever seen a committee work? how they all fight with each other, nothing gets done. That was the idea. He says, okay, I can get that, but why? This couple treated us so nicely, gave us their bed, gave us food, everything, and you killed their only source of income. He says, because I saw that night the angel of death coming for the wife. So I gave the cow instead. Things are not what they seem. So here we are. It's our opportunity. We can decide. Are we going to give in to our five senses and see a challenge only as a challenge? Or are we going to wake up and say, you know what? Things are not what they seem. If I grow in my blessings, if I grow spiritually, then instead of saying, God, why me? Like a victim. We'll come to look at it the other way. God, what have I done to have such a blessing and such a merit to be here in the Kabbalah Center to learn this wisdom to learn how I can see every challenge as a way to fix my past. Quality control. That one, I can shine more light, and two, I can have more blessings in my life. That's the way we should be asking, why me? In appreciation for the fact that we have this wisdom, we have this support, we have this strength, so that the more of us who gather together, and the more of you who are sharing this so we can reach out to the masses, when we have enough people who are applying this wisdom together, even though we're not each perfect, but all our pieces add up together, and if we can get billions of pieces to add up together, then there's no reason why we cannot remove all the chaos, all the pain and suffering, and awaken the heart and soul of God that's implanted inside every human being on earth. God bless. So I wanted to do something also. We're going to do our, uh, the blessing on our offering. And those of you watching, you're, willing, uh, you're welcome to stay. But we have uh, one of our names of God that we're going to use for a meditation after we do the offering. So we do our offering. For those of you who are newer, we are a charitable organization. Our mission is to spread the light of the Zohar and Kabbalah all around the world that we can remove all the darkness. And it really is that simple. Enough light takes away all the darkness. You want to remove all the chaos that we see in the world? then help us spread the Zohar. Get one if you don't have. Start using it.
share it with other people or support us that we can spread it all around the world because it is the spiritual manifests in the physical so if you can turn on light in a room and take away darkness let's turn on the light of the creator and this is why we take these moments just to bless our offering so just uh, for those of you online we'll put the link that you can give but meanwhile just join us so those of you who are here if you could just hold your offering in your hands and injecting it with light with love, with gratitude and appreciation. Reminding ourselves we are just channels and conduits of the light of the Creator. The power we have, the goodness we have, the awareness, everything we have belongs to the Creator and is on loan to us to use it in this world, as we said, to act like God 24-7, sharing, caring in all the ways. So we're increasing the appreciation, the gratitude we have for all that the Creator has given us, that we have made manifest, and sending the energy forward to make manifest all of the light that the Creator has given us, all our talents and abilities all the love, care, compassion, forgiveness, tolerance that's included in that light to completely remove all the darkness from our lives and from the world around us. So with that love and that light, we give this offering. We bless it that it reaches every heart and soul on earth. And together we say, Amen. So, if we can get the other name up there. I said go and yeah, there we go. So this is one of the 72 names of God. They can see it online, yes? You can see it? Okay. So this is one of the 72 names of God that is awakening and heightening our unconditional love. It's called Hey Hey Ein, if you know the letters or if you don't, from right to left, Hey Hey Ein. The letters or what we call uh, nanoparticles of the light or light force particles just shine light. Very simple. So take a look at it with your eyes. The eyes being the window to the soul. The soul already being programmed with absolute perfection, that piece of the Creator inside of us. So it's awakening and heightening and intensifying that light. So with all that's going on in the world that we can see, it is intensifying. More darkness getting stronger. The brighter and more intense light we shine out there, the faster it goes away. So just let the energy shine out of these particles into your eyes, through your eyes to the soul. And then if I can ask you to close your eyes, sitting comfortably, feet on the floor, hands on your lap, just begin taking a few deep breaths, drawing in the light of the Creator through the air, through your nose, hold the breath for a moment, and exhale through your mouth, allowing this light energy in the air to circulate through you, Awakening the light of the Creator from head to toe. Envisioning yourself surrounded in this light. Envisioning the, the light force particles of Hey Hey Ein. Awakening greater and greater unconditional love. Having the strength to pause when our buttons are being pushed and having the power, the awareness, the clarity to act like the light, awakening the light in others and bringing greater light and blessings back to us. See the light, hey, hey, I'm intensifying in your heart and expand that sphere of light that you're in. Let it include all your family and friends. Keep expanding it to include all of your city, all of your state, all of your country, and all of the world. Let's meditate to be in perfect unity. All of us here, all of the students in the center, 
who have this awakening consciousness to all of the world, that we know every person has this potential that's implanted in them by the Creator. So we shine the light unconditionally to every human being on earth. Regardless of whatever has happened in our past, whatever interaction we've had, unconditional love. Awakening higher levels of the light in us, awakening the light in them supporting their transformation from darkness to light and chaos to order. In our mind's eye, allow this light, the power of the infinite light of the Creator, to remove all the coverings that have been hiding the light and creating a perception of chaos and negativity. As one soul, let's remove that covering and perceiving in our mind's eye and let it drop into the heart, the goodness, the light, that pure and perfect light being that is every person on earth. And we can see and envision perfect harmony, care, human dignity throughout the planet. The stronger our vision, the more light we reinforce it with, the faster it shows up. Engrave this vision in your mind's eye, in your heart, and your soul. Taking one more deep breath to seal it in, anchor it in our heart and soul, and slowly exhale and open your eyes. <laughs>